Okay. Welcome to everybody to our very first Cooking in the Pantry with Liza Connolly. We're so excited to have her here. Um, just a couple things. I wanted to introduce you to Michelle Techler, who is our teen librarian and also helping with this program. I would like to thank our foundation who, who supports all of our adult programming in the library. I believe some of our um, members are here, our foundation members, and they're actually the ones that introduced me to Liza. So thank you for a twofold support of that, this program. Um, now, without further ado, I'm just gonna hand it over to Liza, who is gonna be talking about faux fa. <laughs> and I know I said that wrong, but I'm gonna let it leave it um, and let you fix it. Um, it, Liza is a certified health coach. She is a professional chef, and she is a co-founder of Kids Cooking Green, in, um, and also for us is a Lexingtonian, who I, which I think is wonderful in terms of when I reached out to her, she immediately said yes to this kind of programming. So thank you so much, Liza. The floor is all yours. Thank you so much, Mina and Michelle and Mary Ellen, who introduced me to you guys. Um, I. Just want to let you, I know some of you, but I don't know all of you. So I just wanted to give you a sense of who I am. And we're, to mention the elephant in the living room, which is this coronavirus. Um, and always in my life, in uncertain times, I've turned to the kitchen for comfort. Um, sometimes it was destructive um, when I was younger. But cooking professionally in a restaurant really helped me change my relationship with food. I've found that cooking is a meditation, it's, it's the movement, it's all calming for me, and I feel very present when I cook. So when this virus hit, I knew that I would be, like the rest of us, in the kitchen cooking. Um, but also cooking has, the, the reason why the restaurant really healed me, cooking was part of a community. Being in the kitchen with a bunch of people, day in and day out, was camaraderie. And I've turned to cooking and food for that reason too, with the farmer's market and with kids cooking green and um, starting an international cookbook at the bridge school. So for me, when I'm in the dumps, I turn to food and community to heal myself. So um, cooking has become an expression of who I am. It's the way that I share my love. And um, I, when I heard that this was happening, I was like, yep, I'm gonna step out of my comfort zone and do something different and be a part of the community so we can all be together in a positive way. So I hope this does that for you. Um, the other thing is right when this subject came up, I thought I know exactly what I'm gonna do because um, it's cooking from, there's always something in the cupboard that needs to be used up. Um, I, I was rooting through noodles, for example, to use, and I have such a collection from my grocery shopping. I have black pad thai rice noodles. I have thin spaghetti. I have vermicelli. I have what would really be pho noodles, which we say pho in America, so that's why I thought pho pho was funny, but it's not the correct pronunciation, but we don't care. We're just having fun here today. So, um, so I did rummage. I did not go to the grocery store for this. Um, so you'll see me digging around for things. Um, so you got my layout of how we're gonna do this. So the first thing um, would be to pull out all your ingredients. Um, and I've got my noodles here and I actually chose to cook off the um, pad thai noodles ahead of time. And so those I have cooked. And then we'll pick vegetables to use. Um, it's called mise en place. When you work in a restaurant, mise en place is French for getting everything in place. So we'll just get everything in place and then we'll assemble the soup. So um, I get a delivery from um, Market Today, which is a really great business that started in Lexington, and they're, they're bringing um, farmer's market food to people's homes, which has become incredibly essential at this time. I know I'm not really going to the grocery store much. Um, so I have um, carrots from there that I'm gonna use, celery, old celery from the grocery store. Um, I actually got some burdock root, which I might use I might cut my finger off trying to prepare it in front of you though. But um, <laughs> so um, farmer's market carrots and old restaurant, uh, old uh, grocery store celery I'll use and um, ginger, garlic. Um, I'm gonna use some dried mushrooms. So again, things like dried mushrooms. Oh, I wanted to also use kimchi. Um, because, and actually, these are old radishes that I had from some other meal, which we can use, but um, having things in your freezer, 
kimchi in your refrigerator, dried mushrooms, things that you don't have to go to the grocery store <clears throat> are really handy to have around at the moment. So um, these are black wood ear mushrooms that I got um, at H Mart and they're great. I'm just gonna put them, run some hot water over them so they can soften. Those can just sit here and soften while we're preparing other things. And then the carrot, um, I'm not, I talk to the farmers at the farmer's market and I say, do you peel your carrots? And they say, no. So I'm not peeling mine either, just washing it. Um, so even though it's just my family and I who are eating, um, I still want things to be beautiful just because it's nurturing all of our senses, not just our taste buds. So in whatever vegetables you choose, um, I want to try to make them look attractive. So um, I'm just making some thin slices of the carrot and then I'll julienne it, which is like matchstick pieces so that those can be floating in our soup like this. So I'm just going to cut up a bunch and put them uh, in a bowl so that I have my mise en place all set. And I'm just going to make one portion. And then celery, same thing. It's old, but I don't want to, I, I don't know about you guys, but I haven't wasted a darn thing since this whole virus has happened. So, um, cause you never know when you're going to see celery again. So I'm just going to use it all and not worry about it. And I'm just going to cut some pretty half moons here. And put those in a bowl. And those are, those are gonna take about the same amount of time to cook as the carrots, so I can have them share a bowl. And then I've got a ginger root that I got out at Deborah's Market. Deborah's Market in West Concord is awesome. They, you can email them and they will put your groceries out on the sidewalk for you when you pull up front. So it's another grocery store that you don't have to go into. Um, so with the, with the ginger root, uh, you can peel it. If, if, it's, uh, if it's organic, which this is, I don't, always peel it, um, but I will to show you. I'm using a spoon to scrape the skin off. Can you see that? Um, and then, uh, then I'll just use, you can use, I like to do uh, matchsticks of this, but if you don't have good knife skills, you could always just um, grate it on a microplane and then tap it and the ginger will fall off. But I love the taste of ginger. So, um, and I have nice skills. <laughs> So I'm gonna put them to use. But um, when you have something that's round and rolly like a ginger, it's great to put the flat side down so that it doesn't roll and um, lessens your chance of cutting your fingers off. And then you can stack a few slices and get your matchstick pieces again. And I, I, love the, I love the strength of the ginger. So I'm gonna put my aromatics in a separate bowl. And then I'll do garlic. Same thing with the garlic. You can cut off the tail end and then the paper will come off more easily. And you can put this on the microplane and you don't have to, you know, it's very small so it's hard to hold if your knife skills aren't proficient. But really the key is, as Lori and I taught, teach all, and Sonia teach the kids in Kids Cooking Green, if you use your claw and you pinch the garlic, depending on whatever size you're doing, even if it's the carrot, you just put your claw down and drag your fingers back and you slide your knife up and down the vegetable or the garlic. So it's just the same, it's just on a miniature scale with the garlic. So teeny little slices. And I might leave these as slices because I think they're beautiful. It doesn't need to be minced. So I'll put that in there. And what else did I think I would use? Um, kimchi. Oh, you know what? I'm going to dig in my freezer. Um, I have edamame, shrimp, broccoli. Edamame, shrimp, and broccoli. We use those. And, Liza? Uh, yeah. Liza, you have a couple of questions. Let's see. What do we have here? Um, I am located, Stephanie, in my kitchen in Lexington. Um, and the grocery store that I mentioned is Deborah's Market in West Concord. It's a teeny little grocery store. They've got lots of um, specialty products, but they also have fresh produce and uh, meats from local farms and uh, you can shop online at Deborah's and they'll bring the grocery bag out to you so you don't have to go in. Um, yeah, West Concord. 
Oh, burdock root. Yeah, burdock root is very cool. I'll show you how to do the burdock root. It looks like a black carrot. And um, you, this I would peel. Um, if I can find my peeler quickly. And um, carrot peeler, get it? Um, <laughs> so burdock root is great for circulation, actually. Um, so it, I don't really find that it has too much flavor, but it's great to add in soups and stews. Um, for you know cleansing and circulating your blood so um, with all the sitting we're doing these days I think that's a great idea to add some burdock root yeah like if I make beef stew um, or a vegetable stew I'll use the burdock root and this I got um, this I got I actually belong to a food co-op um, and this came from the food co-op so same thing I'm gonna cut this in half and put it on the flat side so that I don't cut my fingers off and then this is um, kind of dense, so I want to cut it very thin, maybe even mince it um, to put in in the soup. So, and I love, you know, how I came up with this recipe. It's not a traditional pho uh, or a fake pho. It's, um, it's, I just, you know, when we're home, what, you know, we don't want to eat the same thing every night. And so I'm uh, just thinking, you know, what do I like to eat when I go out? What what brings me comfort? And I love eating a big bowl of broth. It's very nurturing. And um, so I thought, okay, well, how, you know, we have chicken noodle soup in America. So it's just another version. I mean, you could be doing ramen, but taking other cultures and just playing with them to see what you can come up with. Um, so I'm gonna get out um, my frozen thing. So I'm gonna use some broccoli. We gotta make sure we get our greens of edamame. So I'll use some edamame. And then I'm gonna use frozen shrimp um, or, yeah, I'll use shrimp for my, uh, actually there's peels on the shrimp. I'm not gonna use the shrimp in the neck. But oh, the other thing I wanted to show you is if you don't wanna use noodles, Trader Joe's has these great wontons. Um, and and H Mart has great wontons too. And since it's not a traditional thing, we could we could use those. I know my son is loving eating those. Okay, so I've got my noodles cooked. We've got our vegetables all prepped right here in bowls, so we're ready to go. And now I'm going to turn on the stove, and I have a pot over here. I'm going to put um, a little bit of oil in, and then we're going to um, get the aromatics going so that it. When, they're, when you heat up the aromatics, it brings the flavor out. So um, I know star anise is traditional. I don't have star anise in my house. Um, I do have ginger and garlic, so I'll use that. I love spicy things. Um, I don't have sriracha, but I do have these gorgeous little um, spicy red hot pepper flakes from Italy, which are really spicy. Um, so you only need one. And I just pinch it between my fingers, and then I try not to wipe it on my eyes. Um, and so I think I'm going to put these in. This is the ginger, the garlic, and the hot pepper flakes. And I just put them in the pan and stir them a little bit. Um, and once you start to smell the flavor coming up, that's when it's ready to add the other ingredients. Um, so like I said, I already cooked off the noodles ahead of time. And next we'll go in the carrots and the celery. While I'm waiting for that, I'm going to cook up a little more carrots. You can use anything that you have in your house. I mean, frozen peas would be great in here too. Um, you know, Swiss chard, if you had any greens. I don't have any greens um, at the moment. That's the thing I keep running out of. Um, okay, so I hear it is sizzling. Now I'm going to put in my vegetables. And give that a minute. Now I'm going to use um, for broths. I you could use a beef broth, store bought beef broth. If you do, just water it down because it's very salty. I like to make it with miso, um, just for health reasons. I I like to have miso, and or I have mushroom bouillon, which is great. You could use bouillon cube, um, and then if you don't have anything, you could. I always save my mushroom stems, my herb stems. I put them in a baggie in the freezer. You know, usually you have a carrot, celery around. You can make your own veggie broth, basically out of nothing. 
Um, if you roast a chicken, save the carcass, throw it in the freezer, and then make a broth, you know, from scratch. Okay, these are going, these are sizzling nicely. So I'm gonna use miso. So while that's sizzling, I'm gonna put a tablespoon of the miso. It's, it's about a heaping tablespoon per, per person. So I'm gonna put that in a, a bowl. And then I'm gonna get my liquid. Yeah, about a, one and a half cups, um, I think, per person, um, for a broth. And just whisk it, um, so miso needs to be broken up so that it's ready to go. Awesome. Okay, so veggies are good. Now I'm going to put in our um, frozen veggies. And then while that's working, I have my um, dried mushrooms are now all rehydrated and beautiful. So I'm going to take a hand. You stuff. have a couple of questions. You have, yep. a couple, you have a couple of questions in the chat. Yep, frozen greens, yes. And I just, you know what, anything out of the freezer, you just, you can just throw it in even when the broth is um, in the pan. You can use anything. I think I do have some like minced up frozen kale and, and uh, you could throw that in. Dried seaweed, if you have seaweed, you could put that in. But you know, fod doesn't generally have vegetables in it. It has bean sprouts and herbs and meat that makes the, fla the, the soup really viscous. But um, in this case, if you're making a meal, let's add vegetables and just go for it. So, um, in go the mushrooms. And then, let's see, I can um, put in my broth. And a little more water. And I'm going to see, I don't know if I'll be able to show you this. See if we can show you. I don't know if we can, but mm, it smells so good already. I yeah, the ginger and the garlic. I can smell it already. So got that going. We'll give that a little time. Um, let me just see another question. The water, um, the water was just tap water, Rachel, and I just stirred cold tap water into the miso, mis mixed it all up so that it was unlumpy, and then poured it in with the vegetables and brought it up to a boil. So it's sawing all the um, vegetables now. And then, so these are the, um, I love these black pad thai noodles, black rice. So I cooked them this morning, just like it said on the package, five minutes, refresh them in cold waters to help them stop the cooking. And also with these, otherwise they just get really sticky. So they're ready to go. As soon as my vegetables are done cooking, and so traditionally with pho or pho, you have your broth and then you can sh um, really thinly slice beef to put on top and just the heat of the soup will cook the beef and it'll be very tender. We're not gonna do that in a situation like this. So if you have leftover steak from the night before or leftover chicken, if you want vegetarian like I'm doing, you can do that too. So it's, that's what I love about it. So if my son is eating, you know, I'll put loads of wontons in there, pork wontons. For me, I forgot to put these um, radishes in, which are, they're all about, like I said, we're not gonna waste a damn thing. So I'm gonna chop these guys up and put them in. Good use for them. Add a little more crunch. And now we're ready. I'm gonna put um, the noodles in and then I can show you how to garnish it. So one inventive thing I'm doing when I get my orders from the farmer's market, I'm, I, um, I got basil from market today and I used one bunch and it came with roots. So I thought, ooh, I'm gonna need basil um, and I might not be able to get it. So I got some dirt out of my compost bin and planted the basil. And I did the same thing with cilantro. And I also got kale from them last week. And I'm trying to plant the roots 
and left the baby leaves on. So just trying to be as uh, inventive as we can so that we can continue to have you know, fresh vegetables on hand. Liza, uh, you have yeah. another, you have a question from Inessa about ginger. Okay, uh, she loves ginger, but she doesn't have any fresh ginger with me. Um, yes, you can use ground ginger, um, powdered ginger. In fact, I was, one thing, um, you know, when we are running around in markets, I got these at the Providence um, Farmer's Market. This is dried lemongrass. Um, and I thought, oh, you know, lemongrass isn't generally something that I have on hand. So I was excited to buy it. And same with Thai basil, whenever I want it, I can't find it. So, you know, hoarding things like this at farmer's markets when we're back in, the, um, in business is a great thing to do for when we get stuck in a house like this. But yes, I use powdered ginger too. Um, you could use that. And you could use a cinnamon stick. That's one thing I didn't list on the recipe. You could, um, to, you know, if you didn't have star anise, you could put a cinnamon stick something like that to add more flavor to. Yep, I think that, is that, that's it question wise. Okay, so the soup is looking great. Um, now I'm going to bring it over here and my trusty tongs and Put the noodles in and look at all those veggies. We're supposed to be eating um, six to nine vegetables a day to stay healthy of all different colors. And this is a great opportunity to um, use up what's in your freezer, use up what's in your pantry and get your veggies in. Um, so I don't have any bean sprouts, but bean sprouts would be traditional on there. Um, Got cilantro, which I love. Cilantro is a great thing to eat. It's um, really uh, important for detoxing. Like people who are on chemotherapy, juice cilantro um, to help get the toxins out. Um, and I, I, I'm I'm influent on how to get the toxins out myself. So finish it with cilantro, and there you have your fake foe. <laughs> so. And you can gear it to whatever anybody in the family wants, which is what I really like. Wow. Wow. Yeah, Thank easy. You. That was... you can make a great meal in a few minutes. That's impressive. Rachel says it looks so good. It so, does. It does look good. <laughs> I'm going to open it up to questions. Feel free to unmute yourself if you have a question. Um, or if you're not getting a word in edgewise, you can still send a chat. Um, Liz said, Oh, so I just one and a half cups liquid for all those veggies? Well, it's, I just made one portion. So one, yes, because I mean, look, it's mostly veggies. Um, one and a half cups of liquid is plenty of liquid for one person. And like I said, we're supposed to be eating six to nine portions of vegetables a day. So in here is maybe three. So I'm getting a good start on my day. <laughs> but yes, we gotta um, try to get in a lot of vegetables. So it, it, it's really not because um, things boil, you know, the, the mushrooms go down, the broccoli is, you know, everything becomes smaller when it's cooked anyway. And also they're probably releasing some, <clears throat> some liquid as well, right? Yes, yeah. I mean, this, so is, a huge, this is a huge bowl um, and it's full of liquid. So one and a half cups is plenty for one person. So if you were doing a family of four, you'd need a lot more. Liza, I've always heard that you shouldn't boil um, miso because it destroys the enzymes, that you should add it at the end once the food is cooked. Well, you're teaching me something, so I don't know. I, I don't know. What's it say on the thing? Um, add water, bring to a boil. It does. Okay. Yeah. I've just anyway, heard that it has a lot of beneficial enzymes that are yeah. destroyed. But, so I've always waited, but so I... I'm it thrilled to sense. see you boiling with it. Good. Well, that makes sense um, to tell you the truth because it is, it's got all those great enzymes. So yeah. Liza, I, I love your ideas of um, planting. I never would have thought of that. Um, planting those, the roots. Resourceful, resourceful girl. My mom <laughs> taught me to be resourceful, but you know, don't you, I mean, part of the fear of this whole virus thing is, you know, what is going to happen to our food supply? I mean, we really do need to think about shopping locally and growing our own vegetables and herbs and 
I mean, I'm, I'm planting a lot more things than I have ever planted in the summer. Um, getting my seed, you know, my seeds are already started, but you know, we, we really, I need my vegetables. That's the thing that I miss the most. So I'm not taking them for granted. Um, so trying not to waste and yeah. Being I was going to say also like um, not wasting even in all other times. I think that's a great idea because I have plenty of um, things that end up being wasted because I, I haven't used them in time, but like planting them or getting the dry um, Thai basil is so great because if I buy Thai basil, I pretty much never use it. And right. Exactly. It's just the way, so that was great. Yeah. And also composting. I mean, not everybody can have a compost, but I do have my compost. And uh, I was so grateful. I was like, oh, thank God I have my compost bin when I wanted to plant my seeds because I didn't really want to go out to Wagon Wheel at the moment and, and get potting soil. So, and I used egg cartons in my, as my little seed containers. So, um, you know, just look around and be creative and inventive. We all have to be trying new things at a time like this. So, um, yeah, plant your basil when you get it, <laughs> and your cilantro, whatever else. Liza, what do you think is the best um, <laughs> source of places where we can find in, uh, recipes for, you know, like if you don't have this, use that? You know, I don't know because that's just sort of, um, you know, it's not, I actually don't really see that very often. Um, you know, actually Cook's, um, you know, Cook's Magazine or Cook's, um, I think they're based out of Brookline. He's Cook's Illustrated. Pretty, sorry? Cook's Illustrated. Yeah, right, Cook's Illustrated. He may, he's the kind of person who I would think would say, you could do this if you can't do that. But it's not something that you typically see. So I've offered, um, you know, to help people with this, uh, if you have a pantry that you're staring at and you don't know what to make of it, it it's actually my favorite thing. It's like putting puzzles together for me. Um, and I've, I've been doing it. Um, I put a post on my Facebook page that I would be happy to um, do that for you if you would just make a small donation to the food pantry. And um, you know, there's, I don't know, 700 and something dollars worth today has been raised um, in this way. So reach out to me if you, if you want me to um, help you make sense of your pantry and turn it into a recipe. Um, but just, you know, I think that um, the key is to not get stuck on um, needing to follow a recipe exactly. We can't now. It's a good experience to look at a recipe and go, okay, well, I don't have potatoes. What, what could I use instead? Well, you need a starch. So what could the starch be? It could be a parsnip, or it could be a celery root, or it could just be rice, you know? So mm -hmm. just trying to be flexible and not having to rush out to the grocery store to get every ingredient. It's, it's, not, it's not really that important, and there are things, you, and you'll surprise yourself with your creativity, and you'll learn something new, like not to boil the miso. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eliza, uh, yeah. where do you buy your miso? I got this at Whole Foods. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering because I, I found it difficult to find a good one. Yeah. They have, um, I asked my acupuncturist actually, because she was the one who was telling me to eat miso, and she was also the one who was telling me to eat these black woody or mushrooms. But she said to try to get one that's two to three years aged. And so you can, you can if you look, depending on the size of the Whole Foods. And does it matter the color, you know, of the miso? No, there's all different. There's, I mean, this is a brown rice one. I have a barley one, a chickpea one. They're all different colors depending on what they're made out of. Yeah. If any of you belong to Farmers to You, they have a miso that's excellent. I just posted that in the chat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they are the ones out of Vermont, right? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, they, yeah. Have two, they have several, two delivery spots in Lexington. One of them is in my neighborhood, so that's why I know about it. That's great. Yeah, local farms. I mean, Meadow Mist Farm, I, I'm, you know, the one thing that I'm really excited about is, even though this is a grueling experience for all of us, I really feel like it's bringing home all the messages that we, Farmers Market and Kids Cooking Green um, advocates have been saying all along is, you know, shop locally, support local farmers, um, support your, the local environment, you know, in, in, when we're buying locally, we're supporting you know, having a healthy Lexington. Um, it's saving farmland and um, especially when there's no chemicals being used. And 
that's one of the benefits, I think, of this virus is that there's been so much, so much less abuse of the environment. It's, you know, so many beautiful things are returning. The turtles are returning. The air is getting clear. And we can see that in two or three months, we've made such a huge, you know, change. So I think there are going to be silver linings. Um, and sit know. down and eat with the ones you love. Yes. <laughs> we can do it this way for now, but yeah. You know. Things will change, but it's pushing us all, like I said, out of our comfort zones and we just need to welcome it and find new ways to commune and find new ways to put ourselves out there and um, know that we are all connected. And food, food is a huge connection. Food comes from the earth. Um, when we eat, we're becoming what we've eaten. And, um, you know, it's just uh, it's a, it's a big happy circle. And we need to, um, you know, this is a great time to focus on that. And um, trying to stay out of big grocery stores um, will keep us looking for more local sources. So mm -hmm. it's really important. I'm in um, in uh, Paris, France right now, so I'm not home in uh, Lexington. But Who's that? Who's sorry, it's Alice. Okay. Hi, Liza. Hi. Uh, um, we're we're living in Paris, France, and um, we're in lockdown mode here, but. Um, we have lots and lots of wonderful fresh fruit and vegetable places you know, right in our neighborhood. So mm -hmm. that's great. And we, we go there every day. Um, so this looks like something great to do. And is everybody wearing masks in Paris? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. But you're still going out every day. Um, where the only thing we're allowed to do is go to the grocery store or go to uh, the pharmacy. Yeah. So. Liza, uh, there's a couple of questions on um, chat about Meadow Mist and ordering online. Yeah, well, Meadow Mist. Um, so Meadow Mist is right here on Merritt Road. Um, and Market Today, actually, that's one of the farms that they um, pick up from to deliver to your house. So if you wanted to deliver, you could go through Market Today. Um, they have an app and they're Lexington based. Um, but yes, I don't know if, I don't know if any other, buddy, anybody else drops off at Meadow Mist, but Meadow Mist has a huge range of ingredients. They sell, you know, spelt flour to, shizo leaves, dried shizo leaves to the animals that they're raising. It's, they've got a lot there. Um, order online first. So, um, Amy, you pick up, what do you pick up at Meadow Mist? Or, oh, you just go to Meadow Mist. Okay, she probably calls in and order at Meadow Mist. And then okay, she- Okay, right. Can you hear me now? Is that Amy? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. So you have to call them first and they're very seasonal. Let them know um, what you want. I get eggs from them weekly. I get beef and chicken sometimes. Um, their growing season, of course, like any other farm is just getting started. So they don't have a lot of produce at the moment. Um, but they have ghee, they have um, that fabulous olive oil um, from a Lexington family that has the um, Olive in, uh, Grove in Italy. Is that Taibi? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, you just have to ask what they have. They're, they're um, a little old fashioned and don't always post everything. So do give them a call and ask. Yeah, but they're a great resource and they don't even salt their driveway in the winter. That's how pure they are. They are they, as pure as yeah. it Fabulous. They don't spray anything. Yeah. I wonder if we could crowdsource a little bit and have people write in the chat places that they go to get their fruits and vegetables now, other than grocery stores, you know, like so we could get a list of farmers markets and local markets. Yeah, that's a good idea. Right now or in the summer? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, that's kind of challenging right now because like the Lexington farmers market just ended its winter's market. But if you, but market today, look up market today. It's Lexington based, it's market. And then the number two day, it's an app. And they are going there. I order from them every week now. And they are shopping at the Boston Virtual Market. So um, you can get, you know, last week I got for my, my boys uh, um, buffalo chicken pot pie from Centerville. 
Massachusetts. And then I got, you know, the kale and, you know, beautiful carrots, a huge butternut squash this big. You could feed a family for a week. So <laughs> that's, a, that's a great resource for farmers markets right now. Yeah, market today. But I think we're going to have to wait another month or two for the regular farmers markets to open up. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Deborah's is great. Um, there's also, I know they're super busy right now, <clears throat> but this Misfits, it's, um, I don't know, I think it's kind of um, regional, but there's Misfits, which are the carrots that have two legs and the eggplant that has a nose and, you know, the bruised this or that. Um, but you can, Misfits is another organization that you can order um, vegetables from and get a weekly delivery. Um, and that's all year round. Um, Yep, so then there's the market that um, Lori was talking about, that Farmers to You that comes from Vermont. I am involved with a Burlington Food Co-op. We have a delivery come up every other week from the Amish country. So organic and bi biodynamic food. It's kind of crazy that it, we have it come up from um, there, but <coughs> they're all year round as well. So, but Meadow Mist, is great you can get um you know everyone's afraid they're going to run out of meat and the meadow mist has you know depending on what season they're what, what they have they have lamb chicken and beef um yeah i think that's what they have so there's there's sources but it, we do need to share our sources because it's new to some people finding out where to find food so, I'm, dreaming of, I'm dreaming of August and we all have like hundreds of zucchini in our yards. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle was telling me about Russo's boxes and Waltham. Okay, that sounds good too. I've actually, yeah, I've been picking up, um, they do a flat $50 box or $55 box and $105 box. And it is just, you know, it's broccoli and cauliflower and greens and apples and bananas and um, and you you drive up you hold up your number that you've gotten online and they put in the back of your car oh, so that's great Russo's in Watertown yeah and it's fixed you don't actually pick what you want it's a fixed whatever but it you know there's squash and there's eggs and you can do an organic box you can do a vegan box um, so there are a few options oh, um, and I think they're ordering out like maybe 10 or 12 days out so you know but you there is there is no um you're not going into the store and no one's there's no interaction whatsoever it's it's re, it's curbside with them putting it in the back of your car that's um, great and it's great that is great that's what misfits does too it's just a random box of vegetables but again i like that because you know i might not pick up the burdick root but when it shows up i'm happy to have it you know so it's good you could try new things Mm -hmm. That's a good tip. Oh, there's Metamist's phone number. That's great. Yeah, that's an awesome list. <laughs> really Do we good. have any final questions for Eliza? Eliza, I was just typing it, but can you chat a little more about how people get in touch with you? Because I love that idea of you donating to the food pantry and but how do people get in touch with yeah. you to so, say um, good question Lori um on the uh original um link that Mina sent out uh, describing today's class um there was a, a link to my website so if you go there I mean I can also tell you it now but if you go to my website then there's a, another link to my Facebook page or um my Instagram but the if you go to my Facebook page it's just Liza Stewardson Connolly um, it's Connolly, C-O-N-N-O-L-L-Y. If you look up Liza Connolly, you'll find my Facebook page and there, there's my post. Um, I just made a, you know, mushroom, a cream, cream of mushroom soup, but with, without cream, but with parsnips instead. And it was, you know, I was, I thought it was a pretty picture on my mother's old fashioned linens. And so I posted it and then I just thought, you know what, I want to, you know, get more people. I had just donated to the, um, bank you know, five days ago and it had been on my mind. So I thought, oh, well, maybe I'll just offer this. And, um, you know, and it's turned out other people, it's just, you know, resonating with people. And so Great idea. people are asking me to help them with their pantry and other people are just like, oh yeah, I've been meaning to donate to the pantry. Here's my opportunity. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, if you look on my Facebook page, 
Um, and I did notice also, it was a little bit down to the bottom of the page, but the recipe for what you did today was also included there. I don't know if anybody missed it, but when it came from Carrie, it, it was included, but it was sort of down by the bottom. And I don't know, I'm sure I might have missed it. <laughs> my phone number. Is that what you're talking about, Lori? No, I'm talking about the recipe for what you just did was actually included in the link from the library, but it was oh, yeah. sort of towards the bottom. Yeah, yeah a little PDF um, at the bottom if you want to print that out so that you can, you know, reuse it, re-watch the guide. And my phone number is at the bottom. If you want to send me a text, I can help you with your pantry. <laughs> awesome. So. Great. Nice idea. So I would like to say thank you to Liza for today for taking her time and sharing her expertise and I thank all of you for helping us create this wonderful list that I'm going to send out to everybody. But first, let's say thanks to Liza. Thank you. Guys. Thank you, guys. And Stephanie, um, Stephanie, who started uh, the market today, she just put up the link for the app if you, um, on the chat. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I did want to say that this is a series. We're doing it for uh, the next six weeks, and Liza will be back with us on May 12th. Um, same time, same place, <laughs> different Zoom link though. And um, I don't think we've picked a topic yet, right? We haven't. We no. haven't. No, yeah. we haven't. But next week we're uh, doing some, well, every Tuesday. So check our calendar for that. And also you might be interested in a um, gardening program we have tomorrow about starting a seed garden. So if you haven't looked at that, you know, that's a really good one too. Um, and just thank you. Thank you for helping us do this thing in a, in a creative and innovative way. And I'm going to go make some pho. <laughs> do it. And we know. People, where do we find if, if people have ideas, I've, obviously, um, when I do the next one in May, it will be, again, something out of the pantry. Um, but if people have ideas of things they'd like to learn, I, I was thinking of making a couple different varieties of pasta dishes just because um there's a couple great tricks and you can use whatever's in your house to make a great pasta dish so i'm leaning that way unless other people have an idea of something that they're they're, they're curious about that okay. sounds great right. everyone loves pasta everyone loves <laughs> pasta <laughs> that's right um so a couple of questions just came in the gardening class is on our calendar you can still sign up for it um where is the recipe? It's in the email I sent out yesterday at the very bottom. It's in a PDF, but I'll send it out again um, when I send out notes from today's meeting. And also to, um, after today's meeting, I'll send out in the email, I'll include a feedback survey link. If you guys want to let us know how we've done, um, it's always super helpful for us to know what to do better next time. Yeah, that's great. Okay, we'll Thank consider you. doing a salad next time. <laughs> salad. <laughs> yes, uh, that's cool. You guys are awesome. This is really thank fun. Thank you, Mina. Thank you for organizing. Thank, thank you, Liza. You. Oh, oh, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> Highlight of the day. Good to see everybody. All thank right. you. Bye. 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 Bye.